headmaster of the illustrious Doon School after 44 years of serving in various educational institutions. He served the Doon Schools, the Doon School in various uh, capacities, and we are very fortunate that Mr. Barrett graces our debates as the neutral host from Notebook. Mr. Barrett, sir, if you're there, if you could please say a few words of encouragement to all the students. Yes, Shubayu, thank you so much. Can you? Am I audible, Shubayu? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Hello, Shubayu. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, first of all, let me thank Shubayu for that uh, very gladiatorial music that he played on uh, uh, on the screen. Um, it uh, reminded me of um, uh, the music before a football match more than a debate, but that's just what the debate is. It is a competition, and may the best team win. Uh, all the very best to both the teams. Uh, uh, just a little word of advice: um, uh, be confident. Be convincing and be organized and listen to what the others are saying. Don't be too focused on reading out your, uh, your script. Uh, please plan your rebuttal carefully. And uh, it's nice if you can inject some humor, uh, good examples and facts. And please don't exceed the time because marks will be deducted. Um, try and look up when you speak and try to engage the audience rather than look down. Uh, with that, um, all the very best, and I look forward to yet another one, wonderful debate. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And with that, we will now start. So today's debate is between two schools, one from Saudi Arabia and the other from Bangalore, India. Before we move on with the debate, we are extremely fortunate to be powered by Stay Free. Stay Free is a Johnson & Johnson brand that does, that does a phenomenal amount of good work for women's hygiene, particularly for young women entering their puberty. This is a short public service announcement that they wanted us to share with all of you that I'll just play for you now. She may not understand what she's going through. She just needs to know. You do. Over two million girls will get their first period in lockdown. Your daughter or sister could be one of them. Talk to her. Tell her. It's normal. It's just a period. And after that wonderful message, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to start <coughs> with today's debate. Excuse me. The topic today, this house believes humankind has gone overboard with automation. I repeat, this house believes humankind has gone overboard with automation. The participants are free to interpret the topic any way they want, as long as they're convinced with their arguments, both for and against the motion. The two schools participating today, the Radwa International School from Yanbu, Saudi Arabia, and Orchids, the International School from BTM Layout, Bangalore. This is a Pool C match. We've had one previous match in Pool C, so this will be the second match for the pool. Here are the two teams. I would request the participants to please uh, switch on their cameras as and when I call out their names. The adjudicator for Radwa International School is Mrs. Muthira Feroz. The student speaking for the motion is R. Sai Sakti. Sai, if I may call you that, could you please uh, switch on your camera? Yeah, we can see you now. Uh, is Sai okay? Yeah, I'm good. Is it okay if I call you Sai? Is that the name you get called by? I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. All right, cool. Uh, the student speaking against the motion is Ayush. Ayush, if may, we may have you on camera. Am I audible? Yes, Ayush, loud and clear. Thanks for joining us. That is the Radha okay. International School team. From the Orchids, the International School, BTM Layout, Bangalore, Ms. Deepti is the adjudicator. Nishal is speaking for the motion. Nishal, if you could please switch on your camera. Yes, Nishal, we can see you. And the student speaking against is Oparajita Dhiraj Bhattacharji. Oparajita, if you are there. Yes, we can see you now. 
wonderful so those are the four participants for today the speaking order we will start with sai who would be speaking for the motion for radwa we'll go across to oprajita from uh, orchids for speaking against the motion after that nishal speaking for the motion again and then ayush finishes up speaking against the motion in your first round you get 5 uh, 5 minutes to put forward your arguments the judges will then score you after each speaker speaks we'll show you the scores that the judges give you those scores would be out of 95 and then we'll come back for a round of rebuttals for 2 minutes you can rebut the points for the opponent bench which means sai and nishal would rebut the points put forward by oporajita and ayush clear great sai if you are ready first before we start the debate we would learn to know a little bit more about you which class you are in your hobbies your interests your favorite subjects whatever you want to tell tell us about you am i loud enough and clear yes loud and clear i am sai shakti from grade 12 and i have opted the science stream and my hobbies are to write poems and debating as well and i am a lot more excited for today wonderful sai so if the poet debater is ready now sai we will start your time now well if machines can take over human beings i wonder if hearts can be replaced by engines veins with wires and maybe i should try charging myself instead of a coffee cheerful evening to the gathering i'm sai shakti from radwa international school and i'm here to speak in favor of the topic that yes human kind has gone overboard with automation well what are we doing right now it's an online virtual debate competition and we know what it takes for public speaking right it takes to overcome the stage fear but now right now my judges and my audiences have no clue about if i'm cheating if i'm cheating or if my opponent's legs are trembling sounds mysterious but you have no clue about it and that's what i'm trying to tell you my dear friends anything that's virtual automated online is always incomplete and now what i mean by incomplete is that something is hidden it could be honesty it could be fear or it could be something that matters the most right now well i'm thankful for something and that is i am thankful that and pretty glad that my judges are still human beings and not automated machines keeping that aside i heard a lot about people saying that automation has played its role in medical field i don't get this if doctors could be replaced by machines if nurses could be replaced by machines then why in such a covid situation are we in need of them desperately in need of them even if it cost them their lives and you know why that's because when it comes to taking care and emotions humans can never be replaced by machines and considering the same fact again when it comes to medical fields i agree with you to some extent that of course yes automated machines have played their role but tell me who has access to it only the rich if only the rich can benefit from this from automation and if only the rich continue to become rich and the poor continue to remain poor if the economic imbalance is still going to exist then my dear opponents please tell me where do we see economic development as a whole i repeat where do we see economic development as a whole 20 years from now i wonder 20 years from now i wonder if humans will still exist maybe we'll have to run to mars for that think about unemployment in the name of making things easier first it made us greedy in the name of making things easier it made us selfish and now finally in the name of making things easier we can't be left jobless robots and artificial intelligence can can make us lose around 20 million jobs by 2022 automated machines did not evolve on their own it happened in the cost of natural resources deforestation almost 129 hectares in a minute 873 in a second and almost 1 billion trees in the past 40 years and what more we are ruining everything and you all remember those beautiful dolphins we saw in the coast of italy last month due to covid silence and due to and due to this you know without human disturbances i wonder if i can see them again 
my dear opponents i would like to remind you that before we are too busy talking about the intelligent machines out there i better remind you that those intelligent machines were invented by humans who are smart enough human skills always leads the growth and development of the society and that's enough thus i would like to conclude by saying that emotions are not controlled programs all life's answers cannot be googled everything cannot be automated we teenagers know as this generation the teenagers are busy out there picking random strangers on social media lack of understanding lack of trust from tech uh, from technology to social media to internet to automation we have come a long way and we are ruining ourselves it's high time now we realize that there's a clear line between machine and humans the choice is ours thank you thank you sai wonderfully placed arguments let's see how the judges score you judges you have access to the scoring sheets so we should be able to see your scores flying in now we are seeing the scores come in So you'll have to give us a few minutes while the scores come in. Sure. Uh, Mr. Barit, sir, the points for rebuttal would be filled in after the rebuttal round. If you could please change that. Sir, are we screen, uh, sharing our screen for that, or not necessarily? Okay. If you can just uh, put in your scores, I can see them from my end. Are you able to uh, see that, uh, ma'am? You have not yet put in any scores, but I can see that you are uh, on this. Yeah, I have. That is the reason I'm asking you. Uh, ma'am, I put a score into your sheet right now. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you could. Uh, Yeah, I can see your scores now, ma'am. Okay. Muthira, ma'am, I have your scores for all counts. Is that the final score? Yes, sir. Bye. Thank you so much, sir. Now this. Uh... Can you can you see it, sir? Yes, Dipti, ma'am. I can see your scores coming in. Yeah. So use of uh, rebuttal will only come later. Yeah. I am still waiting for your score on use of arguments. So just give us a second. We will try and get the scores across to you as quickly as we can. Mr. Barat, I have your scores. Muthira, ma'am, I have your scores as well. Okay, it's not taking in. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So is it visible? Ma'am, I am yet to see the score for vocabulary. I have all the other scores. Yes, I can see it. Okay. Uh, I've given it. Thank you so much, ma'am. I have it now. Yeah. So, Sai, if you are looking at your screen, these are your scores up on the screen now. Some wonderful scores there. I think that's a great start to the debate. Good speech, Oparajita. You have your work cut out for you, and you are up next. If you can have your screen, please.
Um, am I visible? Yes, Aparajit, are you visible, you're audible? Um, properly, I mean, I hope it's not cutting or anything. No, no, it's quite fine. All right. Right. If you could know a little bit more about you, your hobbies, your interests, which class, favorite right. subjects. All right. Uh, I'm Aparajita Bhattacharji and I'm currently in grade 12. I would like to thank Notebook and my school for providing me with this lovely opportunity to express my views. It's truly an honor. Uh, my hobbies are rather varied, but I'm passionate about writing, singing, reading, and solving puzzles. About my favorite subjects, this may sound strange, but I love them all. I love learning in general. I really look forward to this competition. And I feel that irrespective of the outcome, it will be an extremely enriching experience for me. Wonderful, Aparajita. If you are ready for your arguments, we will start your time now. It was the year 1455. Johann Gutenberg's Bibles had shown how mechanization increases efficiency and decreases the time taken in book production, proving them triumphant over handwritten books. This is the first step in automation. It is unlikely that he foresaw his printing press would end the monopoly of the monarchy in the field of knowledge, which would lead to the scientific revolution. Unlikelier still was the anticipation that he had set into motion the subsequent improvement of automation. Now, we've reached a stage where business giants like Amazon use automation to save enormous chunks of time while simultaneously cutting down costs by 20%. The next time you receive an Amazon delivery, think about that. Greetings to everyone present here. And if you're feeling optimistic about the future, you are perfectly justified and far from alone. However, there are those who question automation's further development. What about our jobs being among their biggest concerns? What they fail to realize is that often the jobs in question are those that are highly repetitive and mechanical. A a sheer waste of human intelligence. Let us take an example of construction. The realm of construction is a dangerous place for the human body. By introducing machines to perform these dangerous tasks, we spare individuals the painful dilemma of having to choose between ensuring their safety and earning their livelihood. Yet, the use of these machines are not as automated as they should be. Let us look at a less dangerous example. Customer service whose employees are no strangers to job fatigue. An idea to alleviate their frustration was the evolution of chatbots, which perform similar jobs through text. These bots help systematically categorize and suggest solutions for customer issues. To the naysayers who say a bot cannot replicate the human touch required in customer service, I say bots are being taught to mirror a human-like pattern while providing assistance right now. By using a computer's ability to emulate without compromising on its predictability, automation has simplified the entire idea of customer care. Again, this brilliant idea has not been implemented to its full potential. Another thing I would like to clarify is that automation does not necessitate loss of jobs. As Devabrata Mishra, partner at Deloitte, pointed out, this is not the first time we are witnessing the impact of technology and automation. For example, ATMs were supposed to do away with cashiers, but both coexist today. He was obviously referring to the cashiers at banks. Today, we face an uncertain future. The world is going through some major changes and is a constant state of turmoil at this moment. Such an environment may lead to raging conflicts regarding any issue, from the pricing of a product to a stance with respect to ongoing social movements. In such times, reducing human contact to a minimum might just be the most peaceful and safe solution. Here, enter automated markets. Speaking of uncertain times, we are still dealing with the world crisis that is the COVID-19 pandemic. Recently, a British study used artificial intelligence to study and group the most common symptoms of COVID-19. This is a commendable step towards gaining clarity about our current situation. Now, let us take a moment and appreciate the fact that the same feat would have taken humans a much longer time to accomplish. Automated technology has tremendous potential to identify the correlation between illnesses and other life-threatening factors, which is crucial in the ultimate determination of a treatment or a prevention strategy. This potential remains yet untapped 
as we have not developed the technology sophisticated enough to perform this feat on a global level. Hence, I would say that we have not gone overboard with automation. In fact, I would argue that humankind has hardly scratched the surface and are nowhere near as automated as we would like to be. We must explore the uncharted seas of an automated future if we are to progress. To conclude, I would like to turn a popular phrase from the X-Men saga. Automation, it is the key to our revolution. Thank you for hearing me out. Over to Shabhayu, sir. Thank you so much, Aparajita. And I particularly like the use of the X-Men reference. <laughs> I'm sure every student who's attending got quickly transported back to Charles Xavier's palace. Judges, you have the scoring sheets in front of you. Let's see how Aparajita did. Muthira ma'am, uh, if you could please uh, put your points in the column to the right. Those uh, marks that you're filling in are actually for Nishchar. Thank you so much. Deepthi ma'am, we have your marks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Barit sir, we have your marks as well. Thank you. Muthira ma'am, may I take that as your final score? All right, Aparajita, if you can see the screen, these are your final scores up there now. Given that you're in class 12, you'll be very happy to have those marks in part of your mark sheet a year down the line. That is so true. I hope that happens. Our best wishes are with you. Nishal, you are up next. Your classmate or your teammate has done a phenomenal job. Makes your life a little easier, I guess, but that means she's also in your opponent bench and you have tougher arguments to contend with. That is true. I see, I've known Aparajita for a year now and she's a serious competitor. <laughs> we can That's see that. Coming from you, Nishal. All the best. Thank you. Nishal, if uh, you're ready, we would love to hear a little more about you. Which class uh, you're hi. in? Hi, my name is Nishal of grade 12 commerce. Uh, and I'm a law aspirant and I'll take this opportunity to begin my law career, uh, guide footsteps to my law career. And I'm a man of outdoors, so I love all kinds of sports with artistic touches. Does that mean a very well played square cut or does that mean a fantastic slam dunk? What's your sport? I play cricket, football, swimming, uh, <laughs> Uh, basketball, almost all of them. It, it's a hobby for me to go out, explore new sports. It's a way for me to keep myself fit and uh, my mind working. Great, Nishal. Nishal, if you're ready with your arguments, we will start your time now. Did you know medicine, if taken in large quantity, is nothing more than poison? With that in mind, let me ask you three questions. What is automation? Well, as described by Wikipedia, automation is labor saving technology. The technology by which a process or procedure is performed with minimal human assistance. Well, let's underline labor saving technology and go to the next question. Why did humans introduce automation? Well, we introduced automation to eliminate the boring, tedious and dangerous jobs humans had to previously perform. And now let's come to the main question. When is automation at its best? Well, automation is at it its best when it is designed to enhance human abilities and not replace humans. While humans maintain a central role in the workplace, automation can run in the background, assisting workers along the way. Well, that was the idea. But companies that implement new automation technology without transparency or that fail to consider how it will impact their workers are likely to suffer a huge reputational damage. Before adopting any automation technologies, companies need to look into hard look 
about whether it will improve the workers' efficiency and output or not. In the eyes of people who think in terms of science, new invention and innovation is just another step into the future. But the mere fact that the world does not revolve around just science is what's going to prove my point. Job losses and downward mobility blamed on automation has been cited as one of the many factors researching on nationalist protectionists from US, UK and France since 2010. Well, this statement was made by World Bank itself and we know we cannot ignore it. In, when countries like UK, US and France are worried about job losses and downward mobility, think about a country like India whose only positive growth has been in its population. Well, with the tagline of labor intensive country, we can all imagine the side effects it will have on the common people. That's just the tip of the iceberg on our dependency on automation. Well, we have driven automation into levels where we have entrusted our kids' future into the hands of machines or restaurants with human pictures on iPad on wheels. Robot security dogs, robot dogs. These are just the few things that have been developed. But there is one thing which no human can, humans can be replaced with or no machine can develop, feelings. When you know that your child is safe and cared at school, being prepared to be the best human being or waiters serving food with a smile on their face or the time you know when your friend child is making a new pet friend. These are moments and memories which can never be replaced by any machine. I need not explain the levels of human craziness for innovation and automation that we have reached to. But there are things which have not been discovered and will yet to be there. There might be things that a machine can do better than human, but there are things that a machine can never offer. My, things like luxury, creativity, satisfaction. Luxury, do you know why Rolls Royce is the world's most luxurious car? Because every single part of it is created by hand, which takes a lot of time attention to detail and perfection is not required. Creativity. Painters like Picasso, Claude Monet are regarded as one of the geniuses of their time in, in terms of creativity. Charles Darwin, all these creative minds what shaped the future. Satisfaction. When you know you're, you're satisfied when you eat your mom's cooking. These are little imperfect things which you make your day even better. And with that, I end my statement. Over to the moderator. Nishal, very well done. Those were some powerful arguments there. I think you held your own. And I think the phone call coming in between your speech kind of reinforced your argument that when technology comes in between human emotions, what happens? If, if that was planted, that was very well done. Uh, no, I, I'm sitting right next to the uh, house temple. So God has my bank. Cool. Well done. Uh, judges, you have access to the scoring sheets. Let's see how Nishal did. I can see scores coming in. I'm sure the judges are already doing this. Uh, I'm sure the participants have also seen the various heads that you get scored under. Uh, we try to more or less divide them into three parts, manner, matter and method. And then further subdivide them in for a certain granularity because what we are seeing is the quality of debating amongst you students is so high that unless we go deep dive granular into the marking, scores come up very, very close. Which is why it also takes a little bit extra time to fill in those scores. Uh, Bharat sir, we have your scores. Thank you. Muthira ma'am, we have your scores as well. Thank you. Um, Deepti ma'am, the score for rebuttal will have to be filled in later, please. Yes. Can I delete these two scores for now? You can only fill this course in after the rebuttal round. Sure, sir. Thank you, ma'am. All right. So Nishal, if you can see your screen, those are your scores up now. I think some very good scores there. Quite enviable. And now you should have your work cut out for you. Yes. <clears throat> Am I audible? Yeah, you're audible. Okay. There's a feedback 
are you by any chance logged in with another device in the room that's also logged in yes i am with this mobile it's on aeroplane mode it's for my stopwatch you know um if you could i guess yeah it's there is a on aeroplane mode so you don't have to worry about it no i'm not, I'm not worried about you using it for anything, anything else <laughs> but it's uh, more the sound feedback that i'm concerned about uh, a clearer audio definitely helps your score yes definitely i wish i'm still getting a feedback is there uh, maybe some your parents or some some friend is logged in using another laptop to watch the debate um yeah yeah or uh, in the next room could that person take the device a little further um i see okay can i get a second yeah sure okay thank you for uh, science students of class 12 this is the classic example of interference um hello yeah am i audible now audible you're, you're very clearly audible okay. but there okay. is a slight feedback that's still coming i think we can live with that right yeah okay yeah are you sure so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself your hobbies what do you do definitely so i am i was saying i study i am studying grade 12 i have taken science stream with computer science and uh, i like reading things um especially apart from our syllabus anything apart from our syllabus is interesting to me that's what i like great i hope you also like to read things within your syllabus because you'll need them in your exams that is a necessity yeah <laughs> well done ayush uh, if you are ready with your arguments we will start your time now okay our intelligence is what makes us human and automation is just an extension of this quality good afternoon and good evening to everybody i am ayush singh and i am here going to speak against the topic that has humanity gone overboard with automation before diving into the topic let's know what is automation first you see automation is using automatic machines in manufacturing or tertiary sectors or any other sector in and using it in our lives that is automation you see automation is not just one simple invention it is more of a revolution in itself that is how big automation is now coming back to the topic has humanity gone overboard with automation here's what i think definitely not why let me back my my this answer with some facts okay first one the poverty rates have been decreasing how do i know that in 2018 a book was published the en enlightenment by uh, steven pinker he noted one fact since the start of industrial revolution that is 250 years ago the poverty rate has decreased from 90% to just 10% in 2015 this is only possible because of automation of things my second point it is the growth the growth of mankind as a whole do you see 97% of human wealth right now comes from those 200 250 years of industrial revolution so you see this tells us how effective industrial revolution was all because of automation now let's move on to the next point the third point that is its advantages in medicine you see the life expectancy of people have increased three folds three folds since 1820 before it was just 26 now it is three times more than that and what else you see in 1918 there was this pandemic known as h1n1 taking infecting 500 million people 500 million and eventually taking lives of 15 million people all that happened in just one year right now we are in almost the same scenario we have covid but the infections and the number of people who are dying because of covid are much less because of automation now you uh, the, now talking about jobs you see automation is a revolution and a revolution allows you to have several different types of jobs because of automation we have 58 million new jobs it was published in 2018 they predicted that 133 million new jobs would be created in just 4 years now you see because of automation 
things are becoming affordable. Even normal living people, they can buy expensive things. Now, you, did you know that? Black pep uh, pepper was once known as black gold. Every grain of it costed money. Every grain. But look at black pepper now. You find it everywhere. You, you find people just misusing black pepper. Its value has decreased. Why? Because the production increased. Similarly, there are medical facilities. There, there is uh, electronic cars. These are new developments. In the future, when their production would increase, hence, even their prices would decrease, all because of automation. You see, automation is a thing with so many advantages. I don't understand how we can go overboard with such a good thing. You see, automation has a big, a big future ahead of us. As I said, 600,000 pe 600, people lost their life because of COVID. Imagine if we had even more advanced machines more advanced it could have had been avoided that is how powerful automation really is we can avoid people from dying now you see you see uh, we humans have some certain limits yeah we have limits that's why we invent and automation is an invention that is so extraordinary because it is an invention that can invent other things Yes, automation can invent other things as well. We have so many things in uh, this field left. We have quantum computers, we have AGI, artificial general intelligence, an AI with consciousness. An AI with consciousness. You see, that's how powerful this is. So I would like to conclude this by saying that instead of talking about whether we have gone overboard with automation or not, we must be talking how we should live with these machines, how we can live in a symbiosis with these machines and develop further as mankind. Thank you and have a nice day. Over to the moderator. Well done, Ayush. Some great points, some lot of facts there. Very well researched. Uh, let's see how the judges score you. Must make a side note and this is purely in jest, Ayush. You do these hand gestures that remind me of a rapper. I was almost going to drop a beat behind your speech. <laughs> I will take that as a compliment. It is. It is entirely meant to be. <laughs> I can see the scores coming in. <coughs> Bharat sir, may I take that as your final score? Yes, Shubayu. Thank you so much. Mutira ma'am, I will take that as your final score, please. Deepthi ma'am, uh, is that your final score? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Well, Ayush, if you are looking at your screen, these are your scores up there now. Mm -hmm. Well done. Pretty high scores. But now, Sai, it's up to you to take care of the rebuttal. People speaking for the motion would be rebutting points raised against the motion. I'm, I've seen you guys taking down notes while your opponents were speaking. Let's see how the rebuttals go. You have two minutes to rebut a lot of points raised. So Sai, if you're ready, I can see you're on mute. I would ask you to unmute yourself, please. Yes, I'm ready. Perfect. So if you're ready, your time for the rebuttal starts now. Once again, good, good evening to the gathering. And I'm here and I still firmly stand with my point that yes, humankind has gone overboard with automation. 
Well, one of my opponents had to say, intelligence makes us a human. Stop you right there. Intelligence doesn't make us a human. It's emotions and feelings that makes us a human. And that's how you differentiate between a machine and a human. One of my opponents had to speak about the job sector with growth and development. I still don't get it. Do you think it's just IT engineers and mechanical engineers and the rich people out there who you include, uh, include inside this job sector? No way. Only if a farmer and an IT engineer can benefit from the automation at the same time, I'll agree with you that yes, job sector has grown as a whole. Not at all. I cannot see that in our country. Even if you have a device for a farmer, he cannot afford it. Then how is it useful? Talking about affordability, one of my opponents had to say that it's making things affordable. I don't see it. And this and the point called medical field was also stated here. I'm not convinced enough because if a cancer patient has to bring up three lakhs from his or her monthly income just to have access to those automated machines, where are we heading to? One of the other points stated my opponents was that it's just replacing the old jobs in the old society and bringing in the new stuff. Not at all. What do you mean by old jobs in the old society and bringing in new stuff? Do you mean exploiting our culture? And if only one particular group in our society can benefit from it, you don't call it a benefit. Thank you. Well done, Sai. That was a quick rebuttal of four or five very important points there. Judges, please put in your scores now. We will list out all the scores after all the four rebuttals are done. Right? Uh, let me just quickly check. Size rebuttal scores. Judges, if you could please put that in. Bharat sir, I can see your score. Mutira ma'am, I can see your score. Deepti ma'am, we are just waiting for you. Yes ma'am, we have your score. Thank you so much. The next speaker is Oporajita. Oporajita, if you can have you on screen, please. Uh, yeah, am I audible, visible? Yes, you're visible and audible. And if you are ready with the rebuttal, your time for the rebuttal starts now. My worthy opponents criticize the use of automation in the medical field. Let me ask them, how will you conduct MRI and X-ray scans without automation? Going by that logic, we would revert to the dark ages, where a weak heart was cured by drilling holes to the skull. Another point that I would like to bring out is that regarding your dosage. Just a little extra medicine prescribed to a certain patient can kill the patient. Let me remind you that medicine dosage is not determined by humans. No, machines are the only ones trusted to be precise enough to assign the correct dosage to the correct person. On a more humanitarian note, I remember one of my worthy opponents mentioning that none of us know whether the other person is nervous in this debate. I, would, I think I speak for all introverts when I say that this is in fact a blessing. Many a time, many a time, people with strong opinions are dismissed simply because they do not have enough confidence. How much longer will we silence the voices of the shy? in favor of the voice of the loud. For them, I believe, for the shy that is, I believe automation has been a blessing and humankind has not gone overboard by any means. Thank you. Back to Shubhaya, sir. Thank you so much, Aparajita. Wonderfully done rebuttal. Let's see how the judges score you. Mutira ma'am, uh, is that the score that you want to give? If you could just uh, confirm the number, then I'll put that in the right column. But sir, we have your score. Thank you.
Thank you, Mudira, ma'am. I'll just uh, clear the other score. And we have Deepti ma'am's score as well. Thank you. Welcome, sir. All right. Up next, uh, we have Nishal. Nishal, if you're ready, uh, we don't see you on video right now. Uh, am I not audible? Yes, audible, visible. We have you loud okay. and clear. If you are ready with your rebuttal, we will start your time. Two minutes for rebuttal now. My worthy opponents quoted from X-Men. Now I would like to go to Avengers. With great power comes even greater responsibilities. By now, we all know how much auto, uh, power automation has. But the real question still remains. Who takes responsibility? My worthy opponents also mentioned due to uh, automation, there is a revolution. Dr. Robert Oppenheimer, one of the best theoretical physicists of his time, a genius of a man himself. The Americans asked him to build a device which could help them reduce human casualties in the Second World War. He did successfully build a device. He did successfully win the war for the Americans. But the main purpose for its development to decrease human lives, that was not achieved. We are talking about the atomic bomb. Yes, the same bomb which destroyed two cities completely. Then my worthy opponents also mentioned AI with consciousness. Did you know Stephen Hawking had raised a fear with humans that AI will eliminate all living forms? Yes, we have proof that Stephen Hawking's theory might be coming true. Facebook had to recently shut down two of their chat box because they started conversing with themselves in an entirely new language. Is this the new revolution which my worthy opponents were talking about? Time and again, history has shown us. It never ends well when humans try to play God. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to end my case. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nishal. I can totally see you as a lawyer very, very quickly. We will see how the judges are scoring you. Judges, uh, Nishal is the second last column, the third column from the left. Deepthi ma'am, we have your score. Mutira ma'am, we have your score as well. Bharat sir, we have your score. Right. Ayush, it's your turn now. Um, am I audible? You're audible. We can hear you okay. clearly. Perfect. If you're ready with the rebuttal, your two minutes start now. Good afternoon and good evening, everybody, once again. So here, my worthy opponents stated a lot of good points, but here are a few things that I didn't find quite convincing for myself. You see, you see, automation is here not to replace us humans. It is here to assist us, to help us, to help us grow as a society, as a civilization. That is the main job of automation machines itself. Now, you, you, you were talking about the gap between rich and poor increasing because of automation. Yeah. Well, so what do you want to do? You want to remove all the, or, or, you want to remove this automated society and go back to the olden times where your social status was decided by your birth, your bloodline, where the things you actually did did not matter if you were born uh, if you were born in a low class family then you stayed in that low class family forever right now in this capitalistic world because of automation even if you are a poor man you can rise up to the ranks of the society bill gates was the son of a woodcutter he is the second wealthiest man right now second wealthiest and all this is only possible because of automation hence automation is actually decreasing this gap not increasing it. Now, let's talk about how will we deal with diseases like COVID without automation. 
what do you think would happen? Humanity's existence would be threatened by these diseases, by chickenpox, malaria. These are going to kill us, kill many, many, many millions, not just millions, billions. This is being prevented just because of automation. So I would like to conclude by saying that automation is actually one of the best tools humanity has ever built for itself. Thank you, everybody. Over to the moderator. Thank you, Ayush. Wonderful, forceful delivery there. Let's see how the judges are scoring you. Deepthi ma'am, I have your score. Mutira Mama have your score as well. Bharat sir, I have your scores. Thank you. Right, so we have all the scores in. We have your scores from your main round of five minutes. We have your rebuttal scores in. Now I'm gonna play the evil moderator and create a bit of suspense. I'm gonna make you wait. Uh, there are a few announcements that we like to make, a few things that we like to share with you. First is about Notebook. We at Notebook are an edtech company. We create content for students to use while they're studying both in the classroom as well as from home. These are short six to 10 minute videos that refer to every topic in your curriculum and make studies more engaging, more fun. I had placed a bet with myself that today, given the topic of automation, there would be a lot of references made to modernization and industrialization, the early industrial age perhaps. So we decided to play a short video pertaining to that from your curriculum. Let's see if you enjoy that. Hello students, welcome back to Notebook. Do you know how the World Wide Web was founded? On 12th March 1989, the British engineer and computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee submitted his proposal for an information management system saying that it would link all the information stored in the computers of his organization CERN. His boss, Mike Sendel, signed off the proposal as vague but exciting. Little did he know that he was looking at the founding document of the World Wide Web, which would kickstart the era of internet, history and digital revolution. We can trace the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution more than 200 years before the internet revolution, that too in Britain. The English economic historian T.A. Ashton has discussed the achievements of this era when England invented a wave of gadgets in his book, The Industrial Revolution. How were these achievements possible? England, Wales and Scotland had been unified by a single monarchy since 17th century and the country had attained political stability. The system of currency had been established for payments instead of goods. Employees received wages and salaries. In the 18th century, agricultural revolution displaced communities of people and eliminated the livelihoods of herders and landless cultivators. Landlords bought huge amounts of farmland and formed large estates to expand agricultural and earned profits. Hence, agriculture was the first sector where production boomed. As 
agriculture became an organized and thriving sector, there was surplus produce for supplying the towns and cities. Between the 1750s and 1800, the European towns and cities grew in size and population. England saw the biggest transformation with the formation of 19 thriving cities. London became the hub of industries, trade and commerce. It replaced Amsterdam as the principal source of loans from international trade. England had trade links with America, Africa, West Indies and Asia. These countries had trading offices in London. Industrialization developed first in England, thanks to the great network of waterways in the country. Most places in England were located within 15 miles of a river. The English rivers provided 1,160 miles of navigable water in 1724, helping in the transport of goods between markets. Besides, the rivers flowed into the sea. Cargo on river vessels was transferred to coasters, which were the coastal ships. The coasters generated massive employment. 100,000 sailors worked on the coasters by the year 1800. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was a little bit about Notebook. If you go on to Notebook, you will find such videos for every topic from across your entire curriculum. I do urge all of you to check it out after this debate. I would also like to now invite upon Ochin Bhattacharya. Ochin is with us. He's the founder and CEO of Notebook. Ochin, if you would like to shed some light for all the participants here, there's been some wonderful debating and we would love to hear from you. Sure. Uh, Shubhai, am I audible? Yeah, Ochin, loud and clear. Good evening to our friends from India and good afternoon to our friends from across the Persian Gulf. We really enjoyed today's session and very impressed with some wonderful debating skills that I saw today. Indeed, I'm happy to see so much of talent and even more than that, the will and confidence to perform in an international stage and make a mark. That's commendable at this age. I'm sure, you know, all four of you have made everyone proud, including your parents, teachers and friends. I congratulate and thank all of them who have helped you know, you to, you to prepare and mentored and nurtured you during your formative years. I also thank both the learned adjudicators from two schools and of course, Bharat sir for presiding over this event. Also, you know, I thank both the principals and senior teachers from this, both the schools for their proactive and progressive approach to the event. And of course, the audience for being here to encourage these talented youngsters. And of course, more than that, to encourage the cause and spirit of public speaking during this hour of crisis. Today, when the whole world is battling with pandemic and all of us have been confined to our homes, we as a civil society are determined to connect all these isolated centers of excellence and encourage our students and teachers. Yes, nothing can come in the way of encouraging our children. This evening, I'm sure each one of our esteemed audience join me in taking this pledge. It has been really great. See, results are one thing, but more than that, I guess what matters is the spirit of participation. And I'm pretty impressed with all four of you. You know, all the best for your future endeavors as well. Thank you, Shubayu. Over to you. Thank you, Achin. Thank you for those wonderful words. Uh, we are also very proud that we have Save the Children as a partner on this event. Save the Children is an NGO that's more than 100 years old across the globe. Save the Children India has partnered with us across the country. They save millions of childhoods every year. Uh, we have a short message from their CEO, uh, Ms. Bidisha Pillai, we, who we were very fortunate to have on one of our webinars just a few weeks back. Uh, if you could please play the message from uh, Ms. Pillai. Save the Children was born in 1919, a hundred years is not a milestone that many organizations or individuals can claim to have reached. And for us, it's been a tireless, relentless journey to ensure that every child has access to their rights. Every child has a voice. But when we look back at 100 years, because 100 is also a time to reflect, 
We wonder what it would be like to live in a world where children don't need to be saved. Perhaps we could live in a world where Save the Children does not need to exist. And so as we look at the future, we envision a world which is much kinder to its children. A world in which children no longer need to be protected from violence. Where children are not needlessly dying before they turn five. Where every child is going to school, is learning, is playing, and is on that path towards fulfilling their full potential. As we turn 100, we pledge to work towards that future of a much kinder and brighter world for children. Every day, every hour, every minute, we will continue on that path. But we also know we can't do it alone. We want to work closely with the communities, with our partners, with the government, and most importantly, with the children themselves. They are going to be the change makers of tomorrow. Children like Onoyara, like Rahul, like Salman, like Mamta, they are the ones who are breaking gender stereotypes. They are challenging social norms and they are changing the world and the lives of themselves and also children around them. We pledge to continue working with them, alongside them, to ensure that every child gets the right start. I'm Bidisha Pillay and I invite you to join Save the Children in our commitment to ensure that every child gets the right start. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was a message from Save the Children. We are also very, very happy to announce that the winners of the Zero Hour debate would be offered internships to work with the fantastic people at Save the Children. Well, I have kept you in suspense long enough. Today's debate between Radwa International School, Yanbu, Saudi Arabia, and Orchids, the International School, BTM Layout, Bangalore. These are the final scores after both the speaking rounds as well as the rebuttals. Out of a total maximum score of 100, Sai, you have an average of 84. Aparajita, you have an average of 96. Nishchal, 94. Ayush, 87. But here is the important part. The scores are close enough that the audience poll can swing it. So if you have been off the camera, all four of you frantically messaging your friends and asking them to join, you have done the absolutely right thing. The number of participants has surprisingly gone up in the last three minutes. So I'm guessing that is exactly what has happened. The audience, this is where you come into play. I believe most of you have heard all four speakers speak. You get to choose the speaker of the day. I will now initiate a poll on your screen. You will see this on your screen and have one minute to cast your vote. Once you cast your vote, it, you can only cast it for one speaker. So be very careful when you cast your vote. You should see the poll on your screen now. You have one minute to cast your votes. We are expecting 158 votes. Let's see how it goes. Forty seconds in, 151 people have voted out of the 158. The attendees can actually see the votes, so they know how exactly it's going. Five more seconds and we will now close the poll. This, ladies and gentlemen, are the results on your screen. With 11%, Nishal comes fourth in the audience poll. At 22%, Oparajita, you come third. Sai, you're at 31%. And Ayush, you seem to be really popular with your friends. With 36%, you are the audience choice speaker of the day.
which means at this point I will put in the final scores. talking about automation and how much it has gone overboard or not. The fact that I'm having to do all this maths mentally is clearly a sign that automation has not got overboard. So ladies and gentlemen, this is how we stand at the end of the audience polls. Radhwa International School, Yanbu, with 110 points. Orchids International School, BTM Layout, Bangalore, with 95 points. If I could ask the speakers to come back on the cameras, please. First up, it's been a fantastic round of debating. I must congratulate all of you. That was a very, very closely fought battle. The scores will remain with us, but what will remain with you is perhaps the experience. And uh, as far as individual points from the judges go, Operajita, you had the highest points. But as the rules go, 25 points for the audience poll to Radhwa school, right? I will now invite Mr. Philip Barrett, our judge. Sir, if you could please share some words with the audience and the uh, participants. Thank you very much, Shabayu. Um, first of all, uh, let me congratulate um, both teams, winners and losers, because uh, there are no losers in debating. There are all green experience and a one. I still am not convinced uh, whether automation, um, you know, whether we have gone overboard with automation, which means that it is still a very debatable topic and it's very difficult for me to make up my mind. Uh, the best thing that happened to me was that I met four very wonderful students. Um, Sai, for her very clear and organized, uh, you know, you set very high standards, Sai. And Ayush, of course, wonderful chap. He reads out of the syllabus. Uh, he defined automation very clearly. Um, uh, I like Nishche. I like lawyers who are sporty. I wish we have more sporty lawyers. He also defined the whole term of automation. I wish someone had defined overboard or as well. Uh, and again, Aparajata, uh, you have a lovely way of presenting your debate, uh, your lovely body language. I liked your clear diction. So on the whole, uh, I was very happy to meet you all, even though it was uh, over the screen. Uh, thank you very much for, for entertaining all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for those kind words. All four speakers, if I may pick your brains for just a few seconds, right? Because we had such a topic which was equally loaded on both sides. Can you define overboard for me? What, what, which is the point that you say automation is going overboard? That at this line, below this, it's doing just fine. Above this is overboard. Aish, you want to take this? Take the initial go first. And go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> <Yes>, first. <laughs> okay, so um, I think that line uh, that we're talking about is um, should be about employment, you see. Um, I think I think that it is quite possible that automation might exceed humans, might exceed humans in terms of intelligence, consciousness, and, and Nishal also had a few that uh, fact about Facebook. So that must be our line to stop, maybe, because this is machine learning grows faster than what we can anticipate. So I would say once we reach AGI, artificial general intelligence, we must just stop right there. All right, Nishal. Your take? Uh, at the start, I did say um, uh, my medicine in a large quantity is nothing more than poison. So even automation is the same. 
we i need to understand the dose each country requires us might have a high capability with automation but india certainly does not so that's the difference all right so between each country which we have to calculate so we cannot certainly hold where the safe zone is all right so it's country wide for you country wise difference levels for you well all four of you very well done brilliant debate thank you for that we will have to announce a winner at the end of the competition so for pool c match 7 radwa international school yanbu is the winner for all four of you congratulations well done brilliant debating and we hope to see you soon sometime see you for our next debate which happens tomorrow at 3 o'clock until then goodbye